Android SDK, Software Development Kit. What is that and why do we need it? Well, let's start by looking at the entire Android platform. So Android platform consists of Android operating system, that's the part that executes on end user devices, Android SDK, the topic of this video, Android Studio, which is the integrated development environment that we use to write Android applications, CDD and CTS that ensure compatibility between different Android operating system versions, and some other tools. So fundamentally, Android SDK is just a part of the Android platform. But what does it do? Well, the Android SDK is a collection of tools, libraries, and resources that developers use to create applications. In other words, if you want to write, build, and release an Android application, then you will absolutely need Android SDK. There is no way around that. So we say that Android SDK is a collection of tools, libraries, and resources. So which tools go into this collection? Let's just name some of them. First of all, there are Android APIs. For example, Activity, Application, Viewer Key, all these classes come as part of Android SDK. And if you want to use these classes inside your source code, you need Android SDK for that. Build tools that allow you to actually build your source code into an Android application, signing tools that allow you to sign your APKs before distribution, inspection tools, for example, APK inspector that allows you to actually see what's going on inside your APKs and what consumes so much storage if you have that problem. Debug tools, most notably Android debug bridge that allows you to kind of interact with the connected Android device or emulator. Then emulators, of course, these are very important tools that allow you to kind of emulate Android system running on your own computer. The images for Android emulator, so you can have multiple versions, different versions of Android installed on an emulator at any given instant and test your applications on multiple versions. And for that, you will need different Android images. NDK, which stands for Native Development Kit, this component is by itself a collection of tools, libraries, and resources that allow you to write C and C++ code and embed it into your Android application and more. So Android SDK is actually quite a large collection of quite complex tools. It's a very complicated piece of software that we Android developers use to write, build, and release Android applications. Now, one notable exception that is not contained inside Android SDK is actually compile and build tools for Java programming language. So we write Android applications in either Kotlin or Java, and both of them are so-called JVM languages, and both of these languages require the entire Java toolchain in order to be compiled into some executable source code. But that's not part of Android SDK. That's part of so-called JDK, Java Development Kit, and therefore JDK installed on your computer is a prerequisite for using Android SDK. So that's Android SDK at a very high level. And now let's jump into my terminal and I will show you the contents of Android SDK directory. All right, now we're looking at my Android SDK directory. And if I list the files here, we will see that there are multiple subdirectories inside this directory. Some of them are kind of self-explanatory like build tools and others can be quite cryptic like extras. So we will not go over all of them. I just want you to see some of the more important stuff. First of all, your platforms directory contains all the Android versions that you've downloaded to your machine and you can build your application against. These are, let me just show you, for example, Android 33, the latest one. So these are the APIs that you use inside your source code in order to integrate with Android. Now, something very interesting that you could notice here is the following. So if I just go to Android 33 and check the sizes of all these files, you will notice that Android jar, the jar archive that supposedly contains the Android APIs is relatively small in size, just 26 megs. No way you can fit Android framework into 26 megs. And actually what's going on here is that Android jar contains just the public kind of signatures of all these APIs. It does not contain any implementation. So what it means is that when you use the SDK to develop your application, you actually develop it against kind of empty shell of Android. You do not develop it against the actual Android stuff. So that's that. Now let's see another one. For example, we have system images. What system images? Well, system images are just different images 
that you can install on your emulator. In other words, these are actual functional images of the Android operating system. And as you might guess, if I will just, you know, summarize the sizes of all these directories, since platforms, this directory contains just kind of empty shell of Android and system images directory contains the actual images that you can install and execute on your emulators, this system images directory will be the biggest one while platforms is relatively small in size. So now we have also NDK, which is relatively big. This is the native development kit, the kit that allows you to write C and C++ code and incorporate it into your Android application. And then we also have sources. These are the documentation for the different platform versions. Build tools, we discussed that. Emulator, which is quite big also, contains source code for the emulator. Various tools, command line tools, CMake, that's the kind of build tool for your NDK, C, C++ code, etc. And I guess that's enough digging into Android SDK directory. All right, now you know that Android SDK Software Development Kit is a collection of tools that we use to write, build, and release Android applications. It is stored somewhere on your hard drive and it contains very many complex tools. Now, professional Android developers know some of these tools, but most of them are kind of opaque to us. Usually you don't need to deal with Android SDK directly because you will use Android Studio to write, build, test your Android application. And only occasionally when you need to do something manually, you will just go into Android SDK and perform that action. And that's pretty much it for this video. See you next time.